This is the first episode of our engine build series. And basically this is just right after the transmission removal for the Speedo gears. But we removed the trans. Basically, only thing we've done since then was, if I can remember it here, we took the service cover off, took the clutch cable off, got in there with the pry bar, pried that forward so you can move the clutch off. There's a little clip on here, you take that off. Otherwise, we've just been unhooking connectors under here. We unhooked the, the uh, starter one. And whether or not, I guess that needs to be undone, I don't know. I've never, we've never pulled an engine before, like this. Um, so we're just kind of learning as we go. Right now, our next task is, I don't know if you can even see anything. There's the fuel lines uh, right here. These, we got to get on there with our favorite fuel line tool and remove them. And you can't see crap. Get on there and remove these down here so that when we lift the engine out, it'll all hopefully go as unit. Otherwise, I've just been labeling the different connectors we've unhooked, like the O2s and whatnot. But I don't know what all can actually come with the engine and what can't, so. Okay, so we got these uh, fuel lines unhooked. And um, I'm not gonna lie, that was really, really tough to get those to come apart. I'm sure they were quick disconnect 30 years ago, but not so much anymore. I just put a little tape on, try to keep dirt out of the ends because I'd hate to send a clump of dirt straight to the new injectors. But now that we have this done, we're just sort of gonna eye everything up on the top of the engine, figure out what we need to disconnect and whatnot up there. And obviously, as I've said before, we're, we've never pulled an engine out of one of these before or anything else that wasn't just carbureted, which is a lot simpler. Probably gonna lower the car down now. Taking the hood off because, well, got to. All right, now that we have the hood off, I'm gonna just start by taking this intake off, or this intake piping, the cold air, and then we'll kind of spread around, just taking other stuff off. Looks a lot worse from up here. Mm-hmm. I agree with that statement. Like, what is this harness? Where you go? I don't know. I genuinely don't know what this is. You just unplug it, no? That's a good point. So we just pulled the vacuum lines off, and basically, we're, we're just trying to figure out what what can just come out with the engine we can deal with later. Gonna have to take uh, this connector right here off. All joins up into this one that rides over the strut tower. But we have to take this off because that's like the O2 uh, harness and whatnot. Um, also, you can see that the one, I don't know, maybe you can't see it. The one O2 wire is really chewy. <laughs> like, wow, it's frayed out. It's All right. So we've been taking Schmidt off. We got stuff. It's removed. <laughs> Basically, that's all we've been doing. If you remove these, this is your injector harness and everything else that's up here. We just removed the vacuum lines. I removed this throttle bracket. I removed the throttle cable and undid the bracket. He did undid some more connections over there. It looked like they had to be done. I suggest if you, because we're switching to a Holly System X, or not, not System Terminator X, Terminator X. X. We want a System X intake. But we're doing the Terminator X intake, and with that, you get a lot of this new wiring harness stuff. So if you were doing this and you were keeping all your original harness, you'd wanna basically tape the stuff like we're doing here and put a little note on there, like this is for the alternator and stuff. I guess we're just gonna keep plugging away, finding things to remove. Obviously the the shroud, the radiator shrouds, or the fan shroud, it's gonna have to come off. The fan's gonna have to come off, the radiator's gonna have to come out, probably to give us enough room. So just gonna keep unplugging things and updating here and there. Okay, so we removed the smog pump, or not the smog pump, the pump is still on, but like all this annoying hosing, or hoses, hosing, whatever. 
Uh, there's like the, the one with the metal tube that went down to the H pipe, which probably not many people still have these on their cars. But yeah, it's basically all we did. Just undid a bunch of hose clamps, got that out of here because it's just a pain. And I, I pushed that other thing out the bottom. So pretty much it for tonight. We gotta roll up to the house, but tomorrow probably gonna drain fluids. Um, pull the AC off, radiator, all that out. And once we've done that, it should be darn near go time. So, so it's the next day. We're gonna take off the fan, probably. Well, we have to. We have to take off the fan. We have to take off the fan shroud. We have to take off, take out the radiator. Obviously, we have to cool or drain the coolant system. Uh, I need to mess with the AC because there's this annoying line and do other stuff probably with the accessories. I don't know what accessories we'll wind up attacking or taking off before we pull it. But. All right, okay, so we removed the fan, moved the shroud, moved the AC lines. Now we're gonna try to drain the coolant out of the radiator. The problem we're running into with that is there's a little, like whatever they call it, Pepcock valve, whatever, but if you open that, it's just gonna shoot right into the carbon canister and then squirt everywhere. And we don't want that. So, I don't know. We're gonna put it up on the lift some and maybe just pull a radiator hose. Seems like a good way to take a bath, but I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so we pulled, as you can see, the radiator, the, the AC, the upper intake, and just been trying to knock stuff out here. This is just hanging here. We're gonna try to leave this behind, the power steering. Try to like, I don't know, zip tie it or something down there so that we can sneak this whole thing out. But anyway, basically the whole thing should be, should be ready to come out. I'm sure we'll test the tensile strength of some wire somewhere, but I'm pretty sure we have everything unhooked. So basically to tomorrow, we're gonna, because they have the little hooks here, hopefully we'll just be able to hook onto that. I might get an engine leveler, but I don't know. That's what we got accomplished today. It's completely ready to pick out of here. And then the fun begins. All right, after fighting with stuff, got the heater hoses unhooked and the engine mount bolts out and that was a big pain. We're actually gonna pull this thing now. Ta-da, the engine's removed. That sucked a little bit, because I couldn't get the big bolts or nuts off the back of this mount, so I just removed them from the engine. And we couldn't get the starter passed with the bracket on. So we had to scooch in there and take the these off of this side so we could get the starter passed. That went pretty well, actually. We leaked coolant everywhere and i mean everywhere it's out it's on the hoist now we just need to take the bell housing off and put it on the stand so ta-da we got it on the engine stand i know before we were over there and i said we we're gonna put it on and now the car's over there the engine's over here but it took us a while and then i didn't record at all once we got it on the engine stand and we were just removing stuff from the engine got the all the accessories off pretty much as you can see and not really that much left to do for teardown but I should have recorded that but we pulled the valve covers it actually looked really clean inside like I was really impressed with how it looked or happy I should say all in all it went pretty well pulling it we really didn't test the tensile strength of anything uh, we just sort of we were hitting the mount like I had mentioned before at least I think I recorded that. But once we were there, we were golden. We dumped coolant everywhere. 
I mean, this is all just dry sweep the whole way, but went pretty good. I'm not sure what we'll, probably the next video we'll be tearing this down further to obviously start putting the heads and stuff on and cam, but we also have to do some work to this intake too, because this is a GT40 off of an Explorer because we can't get our Holly intake. He's gonna flip it over. But we have to drill a, and tap a uh, hole for the ACT sensor. Boss. There's a boss right here where it should be. But you'll so. only have that if it's a old style GT40 lower. Otherwise the newer ones from 97 on don't have the boss. Yeah. I, think, I mean, you can see it in our old regular E7 intake or whatever right there so because we need the ACT I'm not sure how that works with the Holly but just figured I'd record a little update since I didn't record anything like I'm, I think I recorded us pulling the engine but that was it so tomorrow I'm not exactly sure what we'll be doing but it's probably gonna involve tearing this down more so see you then